Okay guys, welcome back to another episode of Rotten Reviews. On this episode I take a look at the 2010 movie Skyline. It has a 16% on the tomato meter and an 18% on the audience score. Everybody says this one's totally rotten. I don't know if I completely agree. I think there are a few flaws in this movie. I don't think those flaws are enough to justify a 16 or an 18%, certainly not on the audience score. So I just want to find out why this movie is so hated. Right off the bat, um, I saw this when it was very new to uh, DVD release in 2010, and uh, it didn't rub me immediately as being rotten. I thought the fatal flaw with this movie is that about 48 to 50 minutes into the runtime, the pace slows way down, and um, you know it slows from something that is tense and action-packed until it, all the way to like a very slow, meandering pace um, where we're not really going to go anywhere. And I thought that was the fatal flaw in this movie. It just completely like petered out um, pace and tension-wise at about 48 to 50 minutes. Now, I think the other, uh, not necessarily fatal, but kind of wasted footage aspect of this is that the movie starts off with a, a flash forward, or should I say a scene which is set in the movie's present time, but um, requires us to have a flashback to explain that. I don't understand why this was done. Uh, we could have gotten uh, we could have gotten this movie started right from where the flashback started, and then it would have brought us up to speed in a completely chronological fashion, and we wouldn't have had to have any flash forward or flashback. Um, I think that was a lot of uh, wasted energy at the beginning. Not a fatal flaw, but combined with the fact that, that this just slowed down dramatically about 48 to 50 minutes in, kind of made it a fatal flaw. Otherwise, the CGI was great in 2010. The CGI still holds up today. The actual premise, the concept of these aliens and how they are invading, um, there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's, it's done better than a lot of other movies that are more popular than this. Um, it doesn't break its own story logic until the very end of the story. And that is the other flaw with this movie. This movie has a very rushed ending. It has an ending that, yes, does have logic to it, but it's so rushed that it requires you to think about it a little after the movie's over to try to figure out exactly you know what happened. Um, if you're really quick on the draw on this, you can your attention span is really focused on this, and it didn't bore you too much in the middle. Then yeah, you'll get exactly what happened and how it got there. But it's so rushed that um, if you tuned out at all in the middle of this, the ending's just going to hit you so quick that it's going to be abrupt and it's going to make you. I don't know. I guess if you were in the theater watching this it would have rubbed you the wrong way uh, and made you pan the whole movie that's that's my synopsis on this otherwise I think this is a decent movie and I wouldn't give it an 18 percent audience score I think with a just a little bit different editing especially in the beginning so that we didn't have to have that flash forward thing going on this would have been a lot better um, the CGI even on the creature effects holds up today um, it's a little bit gross, but I mean, what kind of sci-fi alien invasion movie isn't a little gross? So that's my opinion. Now, uh, this does star um, uh, somebody I haven't seen in a lot of actual big movies. Um, in fact, I mostly see this actor in a lot of smaller B movies, B sci-fi movies, and I never really knew his name until I looked it up, and it's Eric Balfour. Um, he's kind of a strange-looking guy. He's, he's tall and uh, hard and thin, and he's got kind of a, I don't know, he's got a kind of an odd-looking face. I mean, it's just kind of weird. He's definitely not a, a, a leading man Hollywood action hero type because he just doesn't have the physique and the face for it. But otherwise, um, you know, he's completely serviceable. His acting isn't that bad. I think there are parts in this movie that have some really bad dialogue that should have been um, reconsidered before it was used. For example, there's a scene in which um, the the woman, the main woman character in this that we're supposed to be sympathetic for, she's pregnant. Um, during a very tense part of the movie when the last thing on her mind should have been somebody smoking around her um, and her baby, uh, she goes out of her way to cause a scene with another character because this other character lights up a cigarette around her and she happens to be pregnant. 
This is the least of what would be on anyone's mind, pregnant or not, smoker or not, um, when you're stuck in a condominium and there are um, human eating aliens all around you outside. So that kind of really, that line in particular really takes the tension out of all of this. And there might be a few other lines that are not quite as um, off-putting as that, but they kind of weigh up after a while and give you the feeling that you just can't, um, you know, stick with this. So yeah, there was some dialogue that was a little off. Again, not enough for me to rate this at an 18% audience score. It didn't. It, if it were up to my opinion, the audience score would probably be around 30, 35, maybe even coming up to 40. It's hard to say. Um, but no, people really bag on this movie. Um, it's considered, um, you know, offensive to people that like sci-fi action movies. I'm not sure exactly why, because I tried to do a little research into that to find out why people think this, but um, in the time I had, all I found was people just insulting the movie. Uh, not a whole lot of information there that I had to go on. So when I go into this one, I'm going to be um, kind of taking the approach, just why do people hate it so much? I'm not saying it's not rotten, I'm just saying why does it go all the way down to 18% on the audience score? That I really don't know. So um, let's get right into this, um, audience reviews. The newest one at the top, October 29th, 2019, half a star. This is the worst movie I have ever seen. Well, this and Bandy. Don't watch that either. Terrible acting, nothing happens, and spoiler, they all die in the end in their apartment. You don't know who these aliens are, why they came down, what they want, etc., etc., how they made a second one blows my mind. Well, yes, there is a sequel to this. I think it's a sequel. It has, you know, Skyline 2 is the name. I have no idea what it's about. I haven't attempted to watch it or find it. I think it is on Netflix at this time in November of 2019, so I might just turn it on and see what it's about. I suppose it's a sequel to this, although I don't know how it could be since, yes, all of these characters do technically die with the exception of uh, Eric Balfour's character. His name is Jared. He doesn't technically die because he's kind of, he kind of has a rebirth as like an alien machine of some type. Um, so he didn't technically die in this, but yes, his body as a human did. So I'm not sure how it, there could be a direct sequel. Maybe it's a sequel in name only. I don't know. Uh, this one has half a star in this first review. If I had to put a star rating to this, I would say uh, two stars. I would say two stars. And um, I'd feel good saying that this is a two-star movie. Why? Because there are a lot of movies that are worse than, than this out there that uh, deserve two stars. Uh, the CGI alone is pretty damn impressive. Um, the concept for the aliens is impressive. I don't think the acting was bad. I just think some of the dialogue could have done been done better. And I think that um, we needed uh, the main character and perhaps even his girlfriend, the couple that the story started with, we needed them to be very much more fleshed out, their backgrounds, where they came from, uh, what they wanted. Um, what, you know, we got a little bit of that, but just the very shallow part of it. We needed them to be fleshed out so that all the other shallow and unlikable characters could be glued together so that we could get something out of this. And I think that's another flaw. Since you didn't, this uh, film didn't flesh out the uh, main protagonist and his girlfriend that well, it just leaves us with a lot of unlikable characters that had potential but just weren't sympathetic enough by themselves. And so I think that's, you know, that could have been the actual fatal flaw of this. Um, they should have spent, you know, that flash forward, flashback time that they kind of wasted. They should have spent that on doing something that fleshed out the, the main two characters better. And if they had done that, people wouldn't be saying that there were so many unlikable characters um, and etc. Because you can have these unlikable characters, but they all have to be glued together by somebody, one or two people that you do like, and then they work. Uh, they didn't do that. So before I sidetrack too much, let's get to the next review. Five stars. I love this movie. It's one of those movies where maybe you gotta love sci-fi. All I know is I've tried many times to see it free on YouTube to no avail. It's one that should be in the vault of cult classics. Yeah, good luck finding it free on YouTube. It certainly wouldn't be on YouTube legally for free. But yes, it is on Netflix because I just reviewed it again on Netflix. It is there as of November 2019. So the uh, streaming war that's going on, it hasn't uh, removed it yet. Uh, one star. 
Just don't. Cool concept gone wrong. Uh, half a star. Waste of time. Straight garbage. I don't agree it's that bad. Uh, three and a half stars. The storyline was a bit lacking, but special effect is three thumbs up. The amount of details and the realistic monsters lives up to the top-notch standards, even with the valuation in 2019. So they're just basically saying the CGI still looks good. Yeah, it does. Um, it does look good. Um, you know, again, the CGI looks so good that it makes you want to know more about the aliens, and you don't really get to find out much more. Uh, you get hardly a look at them at all about what, what motivates them. I mean, yes, you know they need to take people and basically feed off them somehow. Uh, but beyond that, you don't know what, anything else about them. And I think that's one thing the CGI kind of did the movie in. The CGI was so good that, yes, you, your mind is wondering, wow, I do want to see something behind what's going on with these aliens. Now, if the CGI had been bad... Or forgettable or the aliens had been forgettable or very much like our other alien um, B-movie type aliens we've seen before, then you, your mind wouldn't be really focused on that and probably you would have just gone to the characterization as the fatal flaw. But again, the CGI looks so good, it begs your mind, begging, hey, I want to know why they look so good, why I'm supposed to, you know, why I'm supposed to focus on these aliens so much. Um, so in a way, even though the CGI looked fantastic, it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Um, it draws you a little too much into thinking about these aliens. And I think that the producers or the director of the movie, he didn't have the time or didn't have a backstory to explain the aliens. So he just decided not to do that. And again, that could have worked. This could have been a four-star film and never really explained what was going on with the aliens. But you would have had to move this centerpiece, the topic of this, from the aliens to these characters to make that work. Um, but again, you're just so drawn on the aliens because of how fantastic they look that, yeah, you need more behind what's going on with them. Um, one star. Slowly, slowly, alien invasion movies are going right down the drain, starting with District 9 and now this. Um, District 9's not an alien invasion movie. Um, I wouldn't characterize it as that. District 9's a lot of things, but alien invasion movie? No. Um, District 9's more like, well, what happens if aliens showed up and um, they didn't invade? You know, it's more like that. I wouldn't call that an alien invasion by any means. Um, you know, in District 9, the humans were the real bad guys. Five stars. Amazing CGI effect and great movie. I wouldn't give it five stars. Again, solid two stars. No no higher than that. They had the opportunity to do things with these characters. I've seen these actors in other things. Some of them in a lot better things than others. But um, none of them were off-putting. I know they're all capable of doing a good job. So it's just the script wasn't there for them to do something with it. Uh, three stars. It's a real bummer this movie had so many drawbacks. It is a really cool take on an alien invasion. It has some really looking, really good looking aliens. It has a very interesting dynamic with what the aliens do to the humans. It's just a bummer that it has that early 2000s vibe. There is a sequel that I'm going to check out. Hopefully it is better than the first one, but still plays on what the first one built. Long story short, this movie will pass the time and has some cool effects, but the story falls flat on its face. Again, you get 40, 48 minutes in, that's when it hit, really. Uh, that's when the pace dropped to nothing, and that's when you realized you weren't going to leave the condo or the apartment building. But up until that point, I was all the way with it, and I felt the tension. And then, you know, 48 to 50 minutes in, you're sitting there, and they're sitting around talking to each other, and that's when you realize, yep, this is where it all went wrong. Um, they just couldn't sustain that momentum. Otherwise, it was doing great until then. Uh, half a star. I reference this movie every time I talk about how some people think movies are good because of CGI and not a decent anything else. Worst movie I've ever seen. B films are better than this. Yeah, well, I'll agree. There are a lot of B movies, B and C movies, um, what we would call certainly B and C, that um, don't fall apart at 48 minutes in and just like become slow and boring. Um, yeah, the CGI is not enough to make up for a flaw like that. Um, I think that, um, you know, it's not even a budgetary issue. I think for some reason they just... Uh, didn't want to leave that area. Again, that could have worked. You could have stayed within this apartment complex and still made a fantastic movie. It's just the pace slowed down, right? Um, 
you could have kept that high action pace uh, for that one hour and 32 minutes or whatnot and just stayed within the condominium apartment complex and it would have worked. Um, I don't think they even had to go anywhere else. I think they just had to keep that pace up. Uh, one star, we're in June of 2019. Skyline is either a sci-fi drama, action epic, or college party film. None of which are interesting and the ending makes zero sense. Actually, the ending does make sense, but it hits so hard and quick, you know, you have to think about it and that's a flaw. Um, College party film, you know, that part of it would have worked better, like I said, if we hadn't have had the flash forward thing at the beginning. And if at least those two main characters had been well set up, then the other college, um, you know, party type stuff would have made sense. For example, it was a wasted opportunity not explaining how this character, Terry, um, who's wealthy and he owns this uh, condo or apartment, it's not explained where he gets the money from. You think maybe he's some kind of rap star or something like that, a musician. But no, at another time he's talking about um, something about video or um, something along uh, filmography. You don't get a sense exactly. It's not explained where this guy gets his money, what industry he works in. Uh, your mind has to just fill in the blanks that he's some kind of um, music producer or uh, rap artist or, um, I, you know, you don't understand what he is exactly. Um, although he talks like he's some kind of um, music producer or something. Now, that's another wasted opportunity because um, you have to have somebody in this movie, even if it's only one main character, uh, that's well fleshed out to glue all the other ones together. And it has two or three chances to do that, but it never quite does. And that's why it's so uh, disappointing. You know, you could have made all that drunken uh, party stuff work if at least one of those characters had been very well done to glue everything together to make it work, uh, to make it make sense, if you, if you will. Um, but it didn't do that. Uh, three stars, one of the funniest comedy sci-fis I've seen, if you want a good laugh. Not really, I mean, there is kind of, well, there is one unrealistic thing that could be funny if you're drunk, I suppose. That main character of Terry, um, the rich guy that owns the apartment, he drives out of the uh, parking garage in his uh, sports car. I believe it's a Ferrari. And uh, as soon as he drives out from the garage, a gigantic alien, um, you know, leg comes down and crushes him. But the, the messed up part that could make it funny is that you think he's dead right there. Obviously, this gigantic alien creature just flattened his sports car with him in it, and it's a convertible. Um, but instead of seeing his mangled body, he just kind of drops out of the wreckage and is still intact without a scratch, even though obviously his girlfriend was flattened. So it's not realistic. It's obvious from what you saw that he was dead. There's no way he could have lived, but yet he somehow slips out of the wreckage to go on into the garage again. That's that's a bad thing right there, and it does come across as like, you know, that could be funny if you were drinking because it's a big mistake in the film. I'm not sure why they did that because it doesn't accomplish anything other than throw you out of the story. So that's a flaw. Um, five stars as cheesy and as bad as it is somehow I keep watching it when I'm high as as fuck and in that case uh, it is an amazing movie okay yeah maybe if you're super high <laughs> but I doubt it because you know once the pace drops out at 48 minutes or so no you're just gonna be really bored if you're high that's my thought on this um, one and a half stars it was entertaining enough to watch the whole thing, which is more than you can say for a lot of the crap on Netflix. Yeah, I'll agree with that. But I don't see why this one is down to like 17, 18% rotten, whereas other Netflix movies that aren't any better are like 30, 40% rotten. So I still haven't figured out the answer to that one. Uh, two stars, February of 2019. A typical beginning with party people no one has any reason to care about. Again, that's because not one of these main characters is you know, fleshed out properly. Uh, then gruesomely monstrous aliens show up and it's not so bad. Then a crazy ending, but nothing could save the movie from being devoid of a story. Yeah, the ending comes so quick, so it doesn't leave you with, you know, a takeaway. It doesn't have a message. You understand what happened if you put some thought into it. That's the problem. You have to put some thought into it. You understand what happened, but 
you don't get a message from it like what was it trying to say it had all these characters and there were at least three of them that could have had something to say that could have meant something but they just lost that opportunity they didn't do anything uh, one star an unmotivated, unmotivated sci-fi flick after a late night party a group of friends is awakened in the dead of night by an eerie light beaming through the window like moths to a flame people outside are being drawn to strange lights which have descended upon Los Angeles and then suddenly vanishing into the air survivors must fight for their lives as the extraterrestrial force threatens to swallow the entire human population off the face of the earth it is weird that I've watched this film like three times Oh, they're asking, is it weird that I've watched this film like three times? Well, see, that's what I'm saying. It's not 17%. There's enough here that if it were just edited better, it would have been a lot better. Um, it's not completely rotten. It does not deserve 17%. It needed a little bit better editing, and it needed at least one of those characters to have a little bit more background, to be a little bit more sympathetic and the rest of them could have still been douchebags and party douchebags. That's fine. Uh, it wouldn't have taken much for this to be a really decent movie. But 17%? No, because obviously why are people watching this three times? Uh, this is the second time I've seen it. I watched it once uh, when it was new. And I watched it one more time. Almost watched all of it, um, you know, about uh, a day and a half ago to get prepared to do this rotten review. And the only reason I didn't watch it completely is because I knew exactly how it ended already. I just wanted to refresh myself on when it seemed to go downhill for me. Again, 48 minutes in, that's when it really, you know, it slows down. Uh, four stars. I enjoyed it, even though the acting and film had a B-movie feel to it. Okay. Half a star. Bad movie with no context. Uh, maybe context isn't the word. It's like no theme because nobody was characterized enough to give you a message out of this. Yeah, you're left with no, um, there's no meaning. Yeah, there's no meaning to this. You walk away knowing what happened perhaps, but not getting any kind of a meaning out of it. Uh, one star, terrible film, stilted dialogue, ridiculous decisions. Let's go to the top of the building. That's the safest place I can think of. Stupid fights. Great creepy aliens, though, and wow, special effects. Uh, I'll disagree on the um, decision for the characters to run back up to the top um, floor of the building. That's probably where you would go to, um, you know, after you had experienced what they had experienced trying to go out onto the street. Um, yeah, you go back to where you know where you were safe before. So, yeah, it sounds stupid when somebody says it like that, but no, you would have ended up the same place they ended up. Um, in their situation it's just that you know the characters their dialogue could have been better um, yeah the the script writers um, they could have put better words in these actors mouths because some of these actors are capable of a lot more I've seen them do a lot more um, half a star the only good thing about this movie is that everyone dies Eh, technically one guy doesn't quite die um, one star was rooting for the aliens Donald face and humor would have went a long way. Scotty Thompson is superb but cannot save this silly film. Yeah, it's kind of silly because, you know, once the pace drops out, you're just like watching these people talk to each other again and you're thinking, wow, you know, so much was happening and then all of a sudden I'm just watching these people sit on couches talk to each other again. Yeah, there was a time for that in the movie, sure when you're setting up the characters, but then to go back to the couches and talk some more in the middle of all the high-paced action and the tension, mm, that was a bad mistake. Five stars, fun, exciting, and interesting. What more could you ask for? Um, well, I've explained what we could have gotten more of, which is characterization. Um, five stars, don't know why everybody says it's a rubbish film, but having just watched it, I really enjoyed the story and the acting, and for me, it was very good. I'm wondering if everybody else watched a different film. Uh, I get the sense that, you know, this is from December 31st of 2018, this review. I'm getting the sense that people don't put a lot of thought into why something doesn't work for them. Uh, it just doesn't, and so they just bag on it as hard as they can. That's a Rotten Tomatoes thing, I suppose. Uh, me, I put a little thought into it, and I can say that, yeah, the pacing is what actually killed it when it just petered out in the middle. Um, but, yeah, some people, maybe that didn't bother them as much. Maybe they were just in a frame of mind that it didn't mind. They didn't mind that it slowed down a bunch again. Uh, but most people know once you hook them in and once you get them on a ride of rushing from point A to B, etc., and they're kind of taken towards the edge of their seat, 
they don't want to just uh, suddenly be pushed back into the recliner again and just relax again. It doesn't work that way in a film. They need the tension to keep rising until it reaches the climax, and this story didn't do that. Uh, half a star. Despite solid special effects, this one is definitely up there in my top ten worst films I've ever seen. A truly special kind of bad. I disagree. Um, I just did a couple of rotten reviews. I did one on um, Superman IV, The Quest for Peace. Uh, that's worse than this. It's worse on many levels, and it's more insulting to the fans than this. This at least didn't have a fan base to be insulted. This is something new. It was at the time. Uh, Superman 4 is fall, far more insulting and worse, and worse in a lot of ways than this film. Um, and also, uh, Movie 43, if you want to pick on something uh, more current from 2013, had big stars, had uh, somewhat of a budget, had a lot of writers, there must have been 14, 15 writers, and yet it's far worse than this, and it's offensive more offensive to the audience than this. So I disagree. This is not in the top 10 worst for me. It does not deserve uh, 17 or 18 percent on the audience score. That's just exaggerated. Uh, two and a half or three stars. Okay, nothing special. Yeah, exactly. Nothing special. One star. Horrible. Don't waste your time. Half a star. The movie is honestly really, really bad. The story is thinner than my bank account, and I've seen newborn babies acting better than most of the actors in this film. The film also just ends in what feels to be in the middle of the film, and it does that in a very bad way. If you'd compare this film to the Emoji Movie, the Emoji Movie is a great film with an amazing plot and overall great characters, and that says a lot. Yeah, it's the way the ending comes. The ending comes really fast. It's rushed. It doesn't feel like a climax. It almost feels like you're not seeing the end of the movie because they dropped that tension. They let it peter out at 48 minutes, and then so when, by the time it started ramping up again, the ending came too fast, you know, and that's why you're thinking, wow, it just ended at the wrong place, and that's why. Uh, three stars. It was a fun watch, and the ending was one hell of a twist. The acting could have been way better for the situation, but still a fun concept. Yeah, again, I'll go back to the scene in which... Um, one of the characters, she's pregnant, but not visibly pregnant. She, you know, the other characters don't know she's pregnant. But she, um, you know, gets upset at another character for lighting up a cigarette um, in the middle of this alien invasion, which they've all just almost been killed by aliens about two or three minutes before. And uh, the one character lights up a cigarette, and this other character who's pregnant, she, uh, you know, causes a big scene over it. It is kind of off-putting and takes you out of the film because, no, I'm sorry, um, you know, your baby was more likely to be developed into a miscarriage from all the stress of almost being eaten and destroyed by these aliens in the parking lot a few minutes earlier, more so than like some lady's secondhand smoke a few feet away from you. It just it's not it's ridiculous. It's not something that should have been in there. Whoever wrote the dialogue, the script, they failed on this. It pulls you right out of it, and you're going, what? You know, I mean, you're in the middle of this alien invasion, and it's right before, that, that cigarette part is right, you know, a minute before the pace just drops like a rock, you know, at that 48 to 49, 50 minute mark. And, uh, yeah, it's right at that cigarette part that everything just goes to shit, pretty much. Um, by the time it picks up again, it's you're so close to the ending that the ending just slams you, and, you know, you're just like, wow, I just got screwed. Um, so, moving on. Uh, five stars, not English. One star, an alien invasion flick that regurgitates all the tropes the genre has seen before, but with a bright blue tint. Well, it has a very nice bright blue look to it. The aliens look really beautiful. And, you know, that's part of their allure. You know, they hypnotize you with this light, and um, then they make you into food of some kind. Um, <clears throat> you know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of what um, Cowboys and Aliens did with the uh, aliens using some type of light to put you in a trance. And actually, that's also kind of done in a way in the, uh, you know, the newest uh, adaptation of Stephen King's It. There's like lights on that creature that kind of hypnotize humans and put them in a catatonic state. This, this is done in a lot of movies, it seems like. Um, so if you're going to criticize that part of it, you've got to criticize a lot of better movies. They all kind of borrowed this concept of um, aliens uh, using this like pretty blue light to um, get people to you know walk to their doom. Uh, 
Yeah, I've seen it in three films right off the top of my head. This one looks better though, the CGI, and it, it's just, um, it's more beautiful to look at in this film. Uh, five stars, no idea why this movie has such a bad score. It's well acted, it's well directed, the effects are fantastic. Most of all, the storyline is exceptional. This is an entirely new take on the alien invasion genre with an ending you don't see coming. I've seen this movie twice and it was just as good the second time. If you haven't already seen this movie, I highly recommend you watch it. Well, it would be all that if it were paced correctly and it had the story structure that you would expect on a typical sci-fi action movie, you know, with the rising tension and then the climax. Uh, this one goes against that. That's the problem. It just like it, all the tension it goes away again 48 minutes in and that's like its fatal flaw that and a few other things heaped onto it um, you know but if you're not looking for a standard if you know not having a standard story structure if that doesn't bother you then maybe uh, you know this is a great movie um, that's that's this movie's real flaw uh, one and a half stars the ending could maybe have been engaging if it made sense, but even putting the best possible spin on Skyline, it still repeatedly commits the cardinal sin of the entertainment industry being boring. Yep, 48 minutes starts to get boring. Three stars. This movie is pretty bad, but I still enjoy it. Guilty pleasure. I loved it when it first came out. The sci-fi aspects are pretty cool. Some decent action, excitement, suspense, and some cool ideas. It also had really bad acting, especially by the lead actor and actress, but horrible choices, bad dialogues, characters you don't care about, and lots of dumb stuff. About three viewings. Spoilers, the ending is the best part, and what made me really love it when I first saw it. Harvesting Human Brains is awesome. Um, again, this is somebody that's seen it more than once. They give it three stars, but they say, you know, horrible choices, bad dialogues, characters you don't care about. Yeah, because they, they needed one or two characters to be very well done. If, they, if the story had done that, uh, this would have been a solid movie. Uh, two stars, bad and slow start, cheap. Couldn't help laughing when an alien survived a nuke blast, but killed by a brick in bare hands. Not too bad CGI and fun to watch the last 30 minutes. Weird ending for a sequel to come. Um, yeah, the military uses uh, what looks like a nuke on it. Um, there's another scene where, yeah, physically they can um, they can kill an alien. It, it's a different alien with a brick. Okay, uh, that's not really a flaw, though. It's just... Um, it could have been explained better, maybe. But then again, that probably wouldn't have been a nitpick if the characters had been more likable. Uh, nobody would have been nitpicking other stuff like that because those are also flaws in a lot of other big sci-fi movies. Um, half a star. All that's missing is zombie bikers. Okay, half a star. This movie stinks. If you make it to the end, oh my god. For those that did, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the ending comes fast. It comes hard. It throws a lot at you at once. Personally, I could figure out what it meant, uh, but again, even though I figured out exactly what was going on, it didn't have a message for me at the end. I still walked away, well, hmm, I didn't get, you know, something from that. Three stars, guilty, guilty pleasure. Three stars were in December of seven, uh, 2017. For me, this movie was a bit of a slow burn. The first half was a bit boring, but it built up nicely to an ending that had me wanting more. I think the pacing issues could have been solved if the cutting of the movie was more harsh in the first half. Yeah, that's the problem. They didn't need the flash forward that scene at the beginning. Uh, it was completely unnecessary. It didn't do anything except waste time, and they needed th to keep the pace up and not let it peter out at 48 minutes. That's the big problem here. Five stars, fun but dumb popcorn flick, not five stars, two stars. Five stars, I think this movie was absolutely captivating and epic. Most people don't realize the time and effort these actors and actresses put into making this extraordinary movie. I applaud the actors and actresses for doing the best they can to showcase this movie to the world. I cannot fathom how much criticism people can create based on how their feelings should be. But to those people, I want them. I want to let them know that things will never go as they plan in life. They will have to learn to deal with it. So they're saying that the reviews aren't fair. They're too low, so they're giving it five stars. That's not really helpful. I mean, come on. Just give it an honest star rating. This is two stars. Um, and people giving it like half a star, that could be their true opinion, but um, I think overall if people would stop trying to counteract what they don't agree with, 
you know, if they think something's unfairly low, they try to slam it with high star scores to try to make up for it. Then there's people that take the opposite tack and they think that uh, a movie, they don't like it, so they try to put like half a star on it because they just don't like it and everybody else does and they're angry about it. Overall, this all comes out in the wash, so to speak, and you can still get, well, at least up in, up in, until recently, this would all come out in the wash, so to speak, and between all these people doing all these things with their agendas, um, you could still get an, get an accurate rating on the audience meter because it all came out in the end, uh, especially with you know tens of thousands of reviews. And that's the same even on IMDb. Once you get up into ten, tens of thousands of reviews, uh, you know, with some being over the top in both directions, you still get a pretty good score, pretty good rep representation. But now, recently, of course, on Rotten Tomatoes, they've kind of jiggered that up a bit and, um, you know, hidden the real audience score behind one that's made up of um, so-called, quote, verified viewers. So it's not like that for, say, a 2019 film anymore, but even for um, Skyline, overall, you know, when it says 17 or 18 percent, yes, that's pretty much the consensus of all the audience reviews. Again, I don't think it's fair. Um, I think it's just people just have no toleration for that pacing problem in the middle. That's most of it. Um, half a star, last review I'll read. One of the most stupid and inconsistent sci-fi movies I have ever seen. A pure waste of time watching it. Again, I don't think it's inconsistent. The story moved along logically. Um, it's just that the pacing fell apart. And so, once the pacing falls apart, there aren't characters to back this up. And you don't have other cool locations to go to. So, wow, that's kind of like the fatal stake in the heart of this thing. So that's what I'm saying. It's it's the pacing. Um, but, you know, other than that pacing problem, yeah, this would be 35-40% uh, rotten. This is worth watching one time, certainly. Um, but if you're really offended when it's kind of peters out in the middle, then yeah, you're going to agree with a bad uh, rotten 18%. So anyway, I'm going to leave that one and uh, move on to greener pastures on the next episode of Rotten Reviews.